Okay, so the first example is one third plus one third, and I'd like you to pause the video, try to figure out what this is equal to, then we'll go over it. Okay, so in this question here, the first thing that we have to see is that we have a common denominator. Now, in fractions, the top number of the fraction, which in this case is one, is called the numerator, and the bottom number in the fraction which is three is called the denominator. And so in order to add the fraction, the denominators have to be the same. So in that case, all we do is we do one plus one, one plus one equals two, and we keep the same denominator, which is three. So the answer to this question is two thirds. Okay, the second example, four fifths minus three fifths equals what? I'd like you to pause the video, try this out, and then we'll go over it. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to try this. Again, what we have to do before we add or subtract is check if we have a common denominator. We see that in four fifths, five is in the denominator. We look at three fifths, we see that we have five in the denominator. So simple enough. All we have to do is subtract. So we would do four minus three, and I'll rewrite it down here. Four minus three equals one, and we keep the same denominator. So the answer here, you can just leave your answers as a fraction throughout the whole video. No need to work in decimals. Let's try to stay in fractions here. The answer is one fifth. Okay, so the next example is one over two plus one over four. Pause the video, and I'd like you to try this out, and then we'll go over it. Okay, let's go over how to do this. So as always, we're adding fractions, so we wanna look at the denominators. We see the first fraction has a two, and the second fraction has a four. So in this case, they're not the same. So before we can add these, we have to get a common denominator. So what we can do here is we can say, well, two times what is gonna give me four? Well, hopefully you remember that two times two equals four. Whatever we multiply the denominator by, we have to do the same thing to the numerator. So we're gonna multiply two times two, and we're gonna also do two times one. All right, so now let me rewrite what we've got here. So we would then have two over four plus one over four. So now, hopefully you realize that we have a common denominator. In other words, there's a four in the denominator of the first fraction and a four in the denominator of the second fraction. So all we have to do is just add two plus one, which is three. So the answer here is three fourths or three over four, however you'd like to say it. Okay, the next example is five over six minus one over two. So hopefully you know the drill by now, pause the video, try this out and we'll go over it. Okay, so here again, the first thing that you always wanna do if you're adding or subtracting, you wanna check your denominators. We see a six in the first fraction, we see a two in the second fraction, they're not the same. So what do I do? Well, I wanna think, is there a way I can make them the same? Well, hopefully you saw that if you do two times three, that's gonna give me six and whatever I do to my denominator, I'm gonna do it to the numerator. So I multiply both the top of the fraction and the bottom of the fraction by three. So let me rewrite this and we'll see what we have. So we now have five over six minus three over six. Denominators are the same. So we look at the top numbers, we subtract them. Five minus three gives me two and we keep the same denominator. Now here in this case, we have to reduce the fraction, right? So two over six is not yet in the simplest or the lowest form. The easiest way to do that is we're gonna divide the top number by two and the bottom number by two. Two divided by two gives me what? One, six divided by two gives me what? It's three. So the final answer is one third. Okay, so this question is one over two plus two over five. So let's try to reduce the answer down to simplest form, whatever answer you get. But pause the video, Try this one out, and then as always, we're gonna go over it. Okay, so the first step when you're adding or subtracting fractions, you always wanna look and say, are the denominators the same? Again, the denominator is the lower number of the fraction. In this case, they're not. And then the second question you wanna ask yourself is you wanna look at the smallest number, which is two, the biggest number, which is five, and you wanna think, well, can two multiply together with anything to give us five? The answer is no, right? So in this case, the trick would be, we are gonna look at the bottom number of the second fraction and then we're going to come over here we're going to multiply five times two and up here we're going to do five times one now what do you think on this fraction over here what am i going to multiply five by well i want to look at the denominator of the first fraction which is two and so i'm going to do five times two and now remember we also have to multiply the top number by two. So let me rewrite this and we'll see what we get. So when I rewrite this, what I get is five over 10 plus four over 10. Are the denominators the same? Yes, they are. 
So now what we want to do is simply add the top numbers. What's 5 plus 4? Well, 5 plus 4 is 9. And do we do 10 plus 10? Nope, we don't. We just keep it the same. So the final answer here is 9 over 10. Okay, next question is 3 fourths minus 2 fifths. Pause the video, try to figure this out, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so again, it's a subtraction question, so we want to check our denominators. We see we've got a 4, we see we've got a 5, so we need them to be the same. So what I'm going to do here is a similar trick to what I showed you earlier, where I say, okay, here's a 5 in this denominator, so I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom of the first fraction by 5s. Now, what am I going to do to the second fraction? Well, I want to look over here, and I want to say, hey, well, there's a 4 in the denominator of the first fraction, so therefore I want to multiply both the top and the bottom of the second fraction by 4, and then let me rewrite this, and then we'll take a look at what, what I get. Okay, so I've got 15 over 20 minus 8 over 20, and so we would just do 15 minus 8, which is 7, and then we do 20 minus 20, which is 0. No, I'm just kidding. We just keep the 20 right here, and the answer is 7 over 20. So I'm sure there's someone watching this who already commented, hey, you can't divide 7 by 0. That's not the right answer. Just know that I was just joking. I like to mix it up from time to time just to make sure that we keep everyone on their toes. And for this next question right here, there's an added instruction and it says, in your answer, simplify improper fractions to mixed numbers. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, just try your best and then we'll go over it. Hopefully you'll learn something new. So pause the video, try this out, try your best and we'll go over it. Okay, so primarily throughout this video, we've been working with proper fractions. A proper fraction would be a fraction where the top number is smaller than the bottom number. Now in this case what we see are two mixed numbers. One and three fourths plus two and a half or one half however you'd like to say it. Mixed numbers have both a whole number and a fraction and so whenever you're asked to do a question like this we want to first take the mixed numbers and convert them to improper fractions. Well how do we do that? That's what I'm going to show you. So let me rewrite this here. So we're going to start by rewriting one and three-fourths from a mixed number to an improper fraction. So an improper fraction is always going to have the same denominator as its mixed number. Four is the denominator in one and three-fourths. We can start by just writing the four here. Then to get the numerator, we take four, we multiply it by one. Four times one is just four. Then we add the numerator. So we'd add three. Four times one is four, plus three gives us seven. So the first mixed number converted to an improper fraction is 7 over 4. All right, and we're going to add that to our second mixed number, which we're about to convert to an improper fraction. So again, we're going to have the same exact denominator, so we can take the 2 that's in the denominator and just put it here right away. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take 2, multiply it by 2, which gives me 4, add 1, which just gives me five here. So I've got two improper fractions, seven over four plus five over two. Okay, so that's the first step. Let me pull this out of the road here a little bit, give us some more room. And now the next step is gonna be, just like always, we want to check four and two. They're not a common denominator. So what we have to do is we're gonna take our second improper fraction, we do the same step we've always done throughout this video. We're gonna get the same common denominator here, okay? The first fraction has a four in the denominator. We can easily turn this two into a four by multiplying by two. So we also have to multiply by the five by two. And now I'm gonna rewrite this again. So I always like to read out what I write here because my handwriting can be a little bit funny. So I have seven over four plus 10 over four. And with the common denominator, we can now add this up. So 7 plus 10 equals 17. And we just keep that 4 along for the right here. Okay, so we're not quite done yet. If you got to this step right here and you got 17 over 4, congratulations, you, you did a really good job by getting to here. But remember, it's telling us that we want to simplify improper fractions to mixed numbers. When we have an improper fraction, we have to know that our mixed number is going to have that 4 in the denominator. So this time we have to think about 4 times what is going to get me a number that's close to 17, but it can't be over 17. What about 4 times 5? Well, 4 times 5 gives me 20, so that's greater than 17, so therefore 5 is not going to be the correct answer. So let's try four times four. Four times four gets me 16. 16 is a number that's less than 17, and that's as close as we're gonna get, right? Because if we try three, four times three just gets us 12, all right? So four times four gets me 16. 
then we want to think, well, what can I add to 16 that gives me 17? Well, simply a 1. And the final answer is 4 and 1 fourth. Okay, on screen is your next question. It's a little different, but it's a similar concept to what we've been doing. Pause the video, try it out, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so in this case, the only difference is that we're doing both addition and subtraction, and we've got three different fractions, but the process to start is going to be the same. So we need to find a common denominator here. We want to look at the 4, the 5, and the 10. We want to think here. One way to do it is to just think, well, if, if we ignored the, the 3 tenths and we just had 3 over 4, plus 2 over 5. Okay, what's a common denominator between 4 and 5? And hopefully you see that the common denominator is going to be 20, because 4 times 5 is 20. So then we would want to look at the 10 and think, can we multiply 10 by something and get 20? The answer is yes. All right, so that's just one way to think about it. But hopefully, in order to get the right answer here, you realize that you have to get a common denominator and that 20 is going to be that common denominator. So there's several ways you can think about it to get to that, but basically that's what we want to do. All right, so let me rewrite all of this here, and then we'll see what we've got. Okay, so we have 15 over 20 plus 8 over 20 minus 6 over 20. The denominators are all the same, so you just do 15 plus 8, which is 23, minus 6, which is 17, and the final answer here is going to be 17 all over 20. Okay, the next question, and again, we want to simplify improper fractions as mixed numbers here, and so you see the question on screen. Pause the video, try this one out, and then we'll go over it. Okay, let's go over this here. So we've got two mixed numbers, and so what we're going to do first is we're always going to convert them into improper fractions. So let me do that here. So let me rewrite this, and I'll go over this one a little bit more quickly than I did the first one, because hopefully you're getting the idea of how to do this now, but basically what we want to do is for the first for the first mixed number converting it to an improper fraction this denominator is going to still be 10 so we do 10 times 2 which is 20 plus 3 is 23 so we've got 23 over 10 all right now let's do the second one here the denominator is 7 in our mixed number so in the improper fraction the denominator is going to still be 7 then all we do is 7 times 3 which is 21 plus 1 is 22. So we're almost in business here, but not quite, because we still need to get the common denominator. And so in this case, we can do the same trick we've been doing, where we look at the second fraction and say the denominator 7. So we go back to our first, and we multiply the denominator and the numerator of the first fraction by 7. Then we can look at the second fraction, go back to the first and say, hey, the denominator was 10 in the first fraction, so therefore I'm going to multiply the denominator and the numerator of the second fraction by 10. So let me do the math and then let me rewrite. Okay, so I now have 161 over 70 plus 220 over 70. So don't worry about the big numbers. Don't let them scare you off as I'm sure they haven't. Um, but you might get some weird numbers like these on the test and you might not. It just depends on the luck of the draw. But don't be intimidated. It's the same process. You just do 161 plus 220 and I get 381 over 70. All right, so now we've got to take this improper fraction, turn it back into a mixed number. 70 times what gives me something close to 381. So let me just guess here in the calculator. Let's just try some different things. So let's just start off by 70 times 5. All right, so in my calculator, 70 times 5 gives me 350. So actually, my first guess was pretty close. So that is going to be 350. All right, and so now let me try 70 times 6. 70 times 6 gets me 420. All right, so remember, the reason why I'm doing this is because I need to find find something that multiply by 70 that is going to be a number close to 381 but it can't be bigger than 381 all right so my first guess 70 times 5 is 350 that's pretty good because if we do 70 times 6 that gives us 420 which is way too high all right so we're on the right path now because we found that 5 is going to be the whole number so i have 5 here and the denominator is going to be the same so we keep it as 70 so 70 times 5 gives me 350. Now, what number is going to go up here? Well, one way to get that, all right, is you take this 381 and you can subtract 350, all right? So 381 minus 350 gets me 31, all right? And so this actually is in simplest form. So this is our correct answer. If you like this video, you'll also probably like my video on how to simplify or lower fractions. You can go watch that now if you'd like. But either way, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope this was helpful. By the way, my name is Parker. I'm here to make uh, people's lives easier, hopefully, with the GED test prep and 
If you like this video, please hit subscribe down below or hit that like button. 